Welcome everybody to the fifth episode of our guide to epic dailies for epic leveling. This episode is all about the daily quest, an offering of blood. The shortened name of this quest is OOB, O-O-B, stands for offering of blood. And this one, just like Chamber of Rayum, just like the Wizard King, it's in the sands of Menekterun. So we're going to speak to the captain, have the far shifter send us to Zawabi's refuge in the sands of the Menek Terun. Now we're going to want to take the quest from... Uh, quest giver's back here. Something moon, something. Shatter moon. Calyx Shatter moon. See? We got an offering of blood, quest bestowed. So while this quest is far simpler than Wizard King, way more straightforward, uh, actually getting to it is much more difficult. You don't just go to the sand dunes and find one of the big buildings and enter it. There's a, a few twists and turns and lots of places to get lost on the way to this one. There are actually two ways to go through it. I will show you one, and then if I remember, I will show you a second one um, at the end of the video. But for now, we're going this way. I like to think of it as going through these two totems, but if you don't have Featherfall, you can't actually jump from there to there, so just like pretend you go through them, and you keep going, and then you go through the second pair. <laughs> I got that from Voodoo Spice. It says go through both pillars. So here you follow the little cobblestone road. Hopefully you don't get knocked off your horse by the gnolls shooting at you. But since it, this is a wilderness area, it's like normal difficulty. So you shouldn't have too much trouble dispatching them. Now from here we make a sharp left turn. No, sorry, not sharp. It should say Serpent's Path. Path. It's a little fork. You can go right, you can go left. If you go right, you eventually, maybe, end up at the location to the third quest that you need to flag for Demon Queen, way up in that mountain. The Mountain of the Firebrand Knolls. Luckily we're not going that way. That's not a daily quest. It takes forever to get there and it takes forever to beat. Even though the XP is not that bad. But the XP per minute doesn't beat this one. We get to the Scar. Big falls from down there. We actually want to go this way. Jump down right here. Ignore the trash if you can. So there are two ways to end up on that side of the ravine. You can either jump off of that way over here, or you can take this little bridge that appears uh, right here and cross it. Whoa. And I will show you where to turn. Ah, this looks like the place. You see a little yellow door because we have a quest. This quest can be red doored. So if you don't have the quest, you forgot to pick it up, or you didn't have time because they were already halfway through the quest and you're trying to rush there so you can get your XP, you can still enter it. Now, you won't be able to flag for the Demon Queen of Raid if that was your goal, so I do recommend picking that up. Let's go ahead and enter on Elite. We've got another overleveled character today. All right, so. The entrance to this quest is completely safe. You're on a ledge and you have to drop down to get aggro of anything. Nothing will attack you up here. So if if someone tells you, uh, oh, we're on, we're running dailies, we're on oob, but we're almost done, Hur uh, hurry up. Okay, so you rush and you get here. One of the mechanics that's interesting in this quest is that the mobs never stop respawning. This is the type of quest where you just have to make it from point A to point B, but there will, al there will always be mobs behind you at some point. So if you drop down at a point where you're never going to catch up to your party anyway, then all you're doing is creating unnecessary problems for yourself. Now, I'm not saying if you showed up maybe a minute or two late, don't even try to catch up to your party. But if they're almost done with the quest and you know they are, you might as well just hang out here until the quest ends and you get your free experience. But let's assume that wasn't the case. 
let's assume we're the ones leading the raid. Also, if you're the one, sorry, not the raid, the quest. If you're the one that starts it by grabbing this blood offering, you're the one that has to finish it. You cannot just start piking because you need to be the one that turns in that uh, bowl of blood to the NPC at the very end. Otherwise, the quest is incompletable. So, if you think you might, I don't know, get a call or, or something that would force you to go away from keyboard, uh, go ahead and don't take the bowl of blood. When you do, it summons this, this guy, the Aspect of Wrath. Just have to kill him, and that'll open the door. Once that door opens, we just keep running and we never stop. If you don't know which direction the door is, it's always north. So you just turn your little arrow in the map northward, and then you go. You can try to just outrun the mobs that are following you. They're pretty quick, and you might get a red alert. But there could also be party members behind you that are cleaning them up, so I don't know. I think it's worth just wiping them out. But don't take too long because they respawn behind you. So there will they will always come. Can't just stop moving. And hope that you don't get attacked. Now here is one of the optionals I wanted to mention. It's behind this locked door. I unlock it. There's a secret boss in here. Killing him nets some HP. I'm probably not going to get it because I'm level 32, but that's okay. I, we should be using dailies to level, and that would have granted you some XP. Here's a little chest. Sometimes it drops blue named items. Yeah, collectible. Whoop out. Never stop coming. Okay. Pull this lever, drop this bridge. I believe this is the only disarmable trap in the quest, and it doesn't get you a trapping bonus. There's air jets and fire jets, and there's also archers up there, so you don't want to drag out drag this out too long. I am under the impression that dis disabling this trap does not get you even the 10% trap bonus. I also can't even find it without my gear. I'm getting shot at, so if you walk this way, the air jets are going to knock you all the way here and knock you down. There will be some scorpions that pop up on the ground, and you have to kind of get yourself back on the ramp and back up. It is much easier to just jump to the side of the flames and the air jets. They can't get you from here. And then jump... Well, the flames can, but the air jets can't. And that's the, that's the important thing. Took way more damage than I was expecting there. I'm going to sit on a consecration for a second. That's good enough. There will be other locked doors, but I don't believe there are actual optionals behind those that give you more XP. It was really just the first one that's important. I went many runs of Offering of Blood without before I learned about that optional. This quest is very straightforward. Don't go to the side rooms except for the first one, just keep going straight. This is the first big boss room, but the boss isn't very tough. It's this thing. And there is another boss that pops up once he is defeated. It used to be the case that if you just immediately kept running after this boss died, you you just outran the boss that comes afterward, uh, Dark Stinger. But now I believe what's the case is that he just follows you. So it's a little harder to miss that XP, which I guess is cool, even though it means more mobs. Another room with the Scarrow.
This quest is full of repetitive patterns, just like Chamber of Rayum was. Only this one doesn't have three different versions in the form of towers. This part's kind of tricky. Ideally, if one person makes it up there, watch out for the archers, they're invisible when you show up, but they'll start shooting you soon. Uh, I should have tried sneaking. It's a little late now, I do believe. Yeah, they can see me, even while invisible. If you make it all the way down, you can drop the bridge, and then the rest of your party doesn't have to make all the ridiculous jumps. Now, if it doesn't look too hard from here, never fear, check out what happens when I jump here. Ah, surprise air jets. If they blow you off, here's what happens. Whee. So you end up on the ground, and you being on the ground triggers a bunch of these scorpions to pop up. And then you have to start from the bottom climbing up through the air jets. I got a little lucky there. Oops. I immediately fall. So this is what you want to do. You want to get up here. You can technically ignore these archers, because they, they won't chase you after you jump on this little ledge and drop down here. This is the area where you can actually drop the bridge. Your teammates will be very helpful, or very thankful, if you uh, don't make them climb that. It's the more efficient thing to do, because more people in the final fight means we get it over with quicker. Especially if the person that made it across isn't the same one that has the bowl of blood, because you need the person with the bowl of blood to finish the quest. Nobody else needs to make it to the end. Just the person carrying this. This is the final fight right here. Summons these big scorpions. Once we take them down, he becomes active, but he also summons the Skoro. Haha, we got him. Now the quest ends when you give the Blood Bowl to Calyx. There have been many quests where all six party members just show up here and nobody remembers who has the bowl. The person that has the bowl is waiting on the party leader to finish the quest, but they forgot that they're the ones that picked up the bowl. Don't be that person. Remember if you took the bowl. But also, um, careful not to finish this quest sometime uh, too fast, because sometimes what will happen is someone will join last minute and the guild leader prefers to wait for them so that they can get their XP. So it'd be nice to hold off there. Or someone joined a little while ago, but they haven't quite made it. It's just good to do a head count here before just brainlessly ending the quest. There it is. Here's the epic chest. When you exit through this rope, you don't come out the same place you came in. So a lot of times when I run dailies, I run them twice, right? So that would have been my hard run, and now I would do a normal one for extra speed. So how do you get there from here? Well, it's not too complicated if you know it, if you know it well. You have to find a little ledge pointing out into the, into the canyon here, and this is the one. And you jump into, onto this side, now we're on the other side of the canyon. And here is the ledge, I don't know if you guys remember from the beginning when we were going over how to get there, where I said you could find this little ledge and jump over, this is the one. This is the one we were on. We ended up finding a bridge farther that way, but this is another way. Actually, am I lying? Is the... No. No, this is the way. So you want to be careful not to fall here. Feather fall is a good uh, failsafe, because it gives you more time to react if you accidentally jump to the wrong place, because you don't want to fall down there. It's probably You'll probably have to recall and try again. But as you're about to see, we're going to get to the same little opening from a different angle this time. You can see what's highlighted on our map, the place we already crossed. Left turn here. And now we're back on track to make it back to the entrance. Now let's say you tried following along with me at the beginning of the video, and you were like, Ah, gee, Prince, I get lost. I, 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 I 
can't I lose track of where you actually went. I wasn't able to make it here. Well, maybe it would help. I set up a dimension door so I'm not getting shot at. To try the second route and see if it's a little easier for you. So I'm gonna recall here and go back into the wilderness area. This is gonna be the last part of the video. And we're gonna take an alternative route. I'm hoping I actually remember it. It would be rather embarrassing if I don't. So you guys remember the first time we went through the two pillars, in theory, and then through the two behind it and into the canyons where the gnolls are shooting at you, then you turn left, all that good stuff. But now we're gonna go through this little knoll village. I'm gonna go under this bridge. That looks like the right way. Hmm. Where are we? Not there yet. I keep going. I'm gonna say it is in this direction. Yeah, see, we're connecting with where we were before. That's a good sign. It's nice if you followed someone to get there the first time and you go to do it again, your map might be lit up like this. Retracing your steps becomes easier if it is. Let's see if I can find where we are. Aha! You guys see where we are? It's where the quest dumped us up, dumped us out when we came out, right up there. And we, we turned around these rocks. Remember how we dropped down to this little point right here? Jump to the other side of the canyon, hug the wall, jump to the other side again. Go through the first passageway. Go through the second one. And it's not until after the third that we make our sharp left turn. Yep, that looks correct. If these mobs happen to knock you off your horse, they're not too, too difficult to kill. Again, this is just a normal difficulty wilderness area. Look at that. We're back where we started, that little crack in the earth. That is the quest entrance. So I don't know if that was easier or harder for you, but that is how you get to the quest. Thank you for tuning in. That concludes our episode on an offering of blood. I will see you for the next daily episode.